Praise the Lord, everyone. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I would like to welcome everyone to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. Amen. Who believes that this morning? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. At this time, our pastor is going to come make a few announcements. It's good to be in the Lord's house today. So good to see each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. I was out of town last week, and I really miss being with the church, being with the church body. Uh, and again, it was just so awesome to be back, me and my family, with each and every one of you. So quickly, we're going to run through the announcements before we begin service today. As always, you can scan the QR code. You can take your phone out. You can even do it right now from where you see it. And you can scan that QR code from your camera, and it will take you to the announcements of the church. And you can screenshot those or save the link or whatever the case may be. Always have those. And again, those should be updated the next few days for August is upon us. Amen? Is it not amazing how fast that the year has flown by? I mean, it's, it's amazing. If you have not accomplished your goals... For 2022, you better get on it. You better get on it. Also, prayer meeting. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. Every Tuesday night at 7.30 here at the church. And again, we're always here at 7.30 having prayer meeting. We have a tremendous time. God moves. We usually pray for about an hour. Tremendous every time we come together for prayer. This week is the first Tuesday of the month. And so at 7.30... Our youth will go into the other building. They will have a corporate prayer for, prayer for the youth. Amen. We usually have about 25 or 30 in prayer meeting. It's good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good group. This Tuesday, I'd like to see if we can push that number up a little bit. Amen. I'd like to see more people in prayer this Tuesday night. Amen. And I know I told the church one time, hey, prayer meeting is a place where you need to come to pray. If you don't like praying, don't come. And how much took me serious on that? I'm going to rephrase that. I want you to want to pray. And I want you to come. Amen. Also, family fun night is this afternoon. It, uh, we're going, we, if you signed up, we're going to the bowling alley. My wife can give you more uh, information. We reserve several lanes for the church group to go. Um, we are going to take the van if the it leaves at 5 p.m. So if you want to ride the van and you need to ride the van, you need to be here. You know if you signed up or not. So um, 4.30. Yeah, <laughs> Lord help me with the announcements. We're leaving at 4.30, not 5. So if I said 5, it was a mistake. But <laughs> we are leaving. Um, now, I want to tell you this. It, anybody can walk in. Okay, so if you didn't sign up, you, you're probably welcome to go. But here's what's important. We only reserve so many lanes and space. So, you know, you may have to negotiate with one of your friends if you want to bowl. And if you can talk them out of it, maybe that you can work that out. But that's amongst yourselves. Also, today is our back-to-school giveaway. Uh, School supplies today. So if there are kids here today, before we leave church, we're going to give out school supplies to all of the children. And At first, it will be first come, first serve. So if you're here and you've brought your child, they're going to get school supplies. At the end of service, if there's anybody that says, hey, my kid couldn't come or my grandkid could not come or whatever, my neighbor's child could not come, then we can, you know, give out. But we got to make sure we take care of all the kids that are here first today, amen, that we help them out. Also, um, back to school bash this Wednesday night. Kids, you got to be here. Back to school bash Wednesday night. Also, women's Bible study for this month. It's canceled because they're going to a section two meeting. Is that section four meeting? Oh, that is a four. I can see it now. Youth hangout Sunday, August the 14th after church till 3 p.m. Young people are going to be here. Make sure you have your youth here. Also, move the mission yard sale August the 20th. 
Move the mission yard sale. That is, move the mission is missionaries. That's how we help missionaries. We're having a yard sale. Um, so my wife, I think, is kind of pushing, promoting that. She's been fired up about a yard sale. I think she's selling all my stuff. So that's coming up. <laughs> boys Bible study trip, the young boys Bible study trip, they're going August the 20th. All right, so if you want to go and be a part of that, there's a sign-up list. On the back there, sign your kids up. They're going to the Barber Motorsports Museum. Our girls' Bible studies having a water war Sunday, August 21st. Holy Ghost Rally, put it on your calendars, August 26th. Everybody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Amen. And then uh, there's a Sunday School Teachers Workshop, August the 27th. Sunday School Teachers, my wife can give you more information on that. I would love for our Sunday School Teachers, as many as possible, to be able to go to that. Also, we are starting a marriage class. Um, it, it's, it's a short-term class. It will start September the 11th at 6 p.m. That's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, we'll start. Be, we'll meet here in the sanctuary. It will go about five to six weeks. We have, I think, five lessons. But, you know, if one lesson takes a little longer, we'll allow time for that to into a second week if we need to. But I'd, we already have, I think, three or four that have signed up, families or couples that have signed up. I encourage you to sign up. And as always, we need volunteers at the church. As always, we upload to YouTube. We live stream to Facebook. And if you'd like to give online, you can give that way on GiveLify or in the offering baskets during service. All right, church, let's stand to our feet. How many of you are ready to have church this morning? Come on, give the Lord some praise. Amen, amen. I'm going to ask Brother McCammon to come up. He's going to share something and lead us in prayer this morning. Give him your attention, and let's get ready for the for worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, so I talked to Brother Bean, talked to Sister Harold. The Lord has given me something that I feel like is very, very, very needed for this hour. And uh, Brother, Brother Landrum. He don't know, I didn't say it in class, but he talked about pretty much what I was going to say. Then I found out, kind of sort of, that it went along with what y'all talked about in Sunday school here this morning. But how many know in the sanctuary that we are all family? And we are all ministers one unto another. Uh, the Bible says we're supposed to go out, and, you know, outside the doors and witness and compel others to come in. But also here we also talk about help and how we want to uh, be a help and minister and kind of thing. But it hit me that sometimes we're all under a weight of something, some type of uh, maybe a, a, a uh, addiction of some type. If you have an addiction, if you don't, then maybe there's something else that you have. Maybe it's a, like Brother Bean, a sin of drinking. Maybe it's a sin of lying. Maybe it's a sin of something that's holding us down. But we don't want to give up that sin because we are like the attachment that it has on us. And so, you know, and I, I had a little demonstration, but it, it, for the sake of time, we won't go through it. But it hit me if maybe you are standing and you picture a person sitting here and a, a taller person and a smaller person and a younger person trying to pull the, the bigger person down. It, it's not going to work because that smaller person is too weak to pull that person down. But if the bigger person would swap size, listen to me for a second, please. It's, it's important if you listen to me. I promise it will help you because it helped me when the Holy Ghost gave it to me. And the Holy Ghost speaks to me a little different sometimes, and it's very needed, I think, for this hour. But if you picture this, if a taller person would stand up and pull the other person up into the seat where the other person is at, that load begins to lift off. And at that same time, you are telling your problem to get under you where it belongs. And at the same time, it's... Telling that, that sin, that thing, hey, I got priority over you. In the name of Jesus, you got to get back under my feet where I put you. Not only that, but I was thinking too, uh, if we're in the sanctuary today, uh, we are our brothers and sisters, keepers in the house of God. Uh, we ought to be able to walk up to your brother and your sister and say, hey, uh, the Holy Ghost wants me to pray for you. Uh, the Holy Ghost wants me to bring you to the altar. The Holy Ghost wants me uh, to help lead and guide and direct you uh, into the truth uh, and to God's house that we're living in today. I promise you if you'll get a hold of what I'm saying today, it will help us in this hour. At this time, I'm asking each and every one of you, if you know a brother or sister under the sound of my voice that's going through something, I'm asking you with encouragement today, will you please bring them to the altar? Brother Bean, if you will, will you step down today? 
I hope this helps you the way it helped me. If you, if you can grasp it, it's very needed. But if Brother Bean's coming today, if you know anybody, maybe you uh, are having some situations in your life, uh, will you please come today and let the church pray for you as we go to the Lord in prayer. Everybody close your eyes and hands raised at this time, please. Lord, we love you. Lord, we ask you, God, to come into this service today, God. We ask you to move, God, in a mighty way, God. Lord, you know each and every need today, God. Understand of our voice today. Uh, we ask you, Lord, right now, begin to touch, God, heal, God. Uh, let addictions, God, be dissipated in your name, Jesus. Uh, we pray, God, that you would have your way today, God. Lord, break chains, God, we ask you today, God. Uh, we plead the blood in this place today, Jesus. Uh, Lord, let your will be done today, God.
worship you, Jesus. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our Come praise. Come on, somebody begin to pour, pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. Our praise. Right now. your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out
Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our breath. Praise out this pour Lord. Out our Lord, praise it's our breath. Your breath. Hallelujah, in Jesus. Our lungs. So we pour out Trust in you. And we're standing on the promise of 
shelter when I need a friend I go to the rock Where do I go? Hallelujah When there's no one oh, else Where could I go? Who do I talk to? Who could I talk to? When no one wants oh, to Oh, would you hear my cry, Who Lord? Do I Who do I lean on? When there's no foundation say, oh, I still no go to the rock shelter when I need a friend. Come on, could you clap your hands, everybody? Where do I hide? Where do I hide? Till the storms have all Oh, when away. the storms of life Where are coming my way, I can still run to Jesus. And the winds of sorrow Because I know He is my refuge. In the time of tribulation, when my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock. One more time, the chorus. I go to, to the, the rock, rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to, to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. He is that rock. When the earth around me is sinking sand, oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a shelter, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, if we could, everybody lift up a voice. You're clapping? Now raise a voice to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. On, let's worship. You want to worship? That's fine. We're gonna worship. Come on in and worship the living God. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. It stands by me. When the earth around me is sinking sand, oh, Christ the solid he is rock I stand. That's where I stand. When I need a shelter, Ooh. when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I go? Where do I go when there's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody will listen? When no when one nobody wants to listen, to hear my cry. who do I lean on? There's no foundation stable. Oh, go to the rock, I know the stable. I go to the rock. I still call on Jesus. I go to the rock. followed the Lord and it set the tone for the service. Amen. Amen. That's nothing but the power of God and just let's be sensitive to it and God will help us. And I want to thank the worship, uh, the musicians, the worship leaders, the singers this morning. There has just been a wonderful anointing and power of God in the house today. Amen. So I'm going to, I'm going to speak to you, preach to you this morning about worship the true God. And I want us just, I want to take you in the Bible, two passages of scriptures to begin. I, you probably never closely read or studied 
or paid much attention to these two scriptures. And I'll get into probably why a little bit later. But Leviticus 19 and 4, we'll begin there. It says, turn ye not unto idols. I didn't figure we'd get a whole lot of excitement on that because we're living in the modern world. I mean, we don't have idols. Nor make to yourselves molten images. And I haven't seen anybody lately melting down precious metals pouring little golden calves or little demigods. I, I mean, I haven't seen that. Have you? No, I mean, not. I don't think it's, maybe this doesn't apply today. But anyway, let's, for sake of argument, the Lord said, don't do it. He said, I am the Lord, your God. And then I want to take you in the New Testament to 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. It says, and I like this because God is speaking to us as the Father. He's kind of coming, he says, little children. Kind of feels like he's getting on to us, but with a little bit of love, you know. Little, listen here, little children. Keep yourself from idols. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord by standing this morning. And you, you're welcome to preach with me today. Amen. To speak to a church in North America. In the 21st century, on a Sunday morning, when the house is full, full of, full of church folks. This is not a Friday night celebrate recovery Bible study. This is Sunday morning. This is Sunday morning. This is when all the Christians come to church. I have to say that because they don't come to the other services. It got uncomfortable. It was so un. You know how the Bible says the Spirit of God was so strong they couldn't stand to minister? After I said that, it got so comfortable, uncomfortable, I couldn't even stand up here after that. But on a Sunday morning, here I've come today to tell you to worship the true God, and I've taken a context in Scripture about abstaining from idolatry. It's almost as if preaching these scriptures, and, and don't get offended just yet, and don't think I went off my rocker. It would almost seem that these two scriptures are almost irrelevant in today's churches, wouldn't it? We don't need to do idolatry. Marsha, we don't do idolatry. Brother Dennis, I should have preached on something else because... We don't fool with things idol. No, not, not in an apostolic Pentecostal church on Sunday morning after we. No. No. Preacher, you way off base. You need to be preaching that in a third world country where they're, they got witch doctors and all of that stuff. Or at least that should be the case, but I don't believe it is. Churches have grown and developed our society in a lot of ways. A lot of good things. I mean, you can look at the effect that Christianity has had on the world. It's brought a lot of good things in, into society. A few thousand years ago, some of you brothers would have had about ten wives. While the attendance would be multiplied times 10 this morning, there may would be a lot of trouble in the household. Christianity's had a big effect, whether you want to admit it or not. The church has the people in society to a place where this kind of scripture and teaching may seem a waste of time, off base. Is it even necessary? I tell you what, preacher, I know this, I know this already. I'm going to go ahead and catch the chicken. 
the fried chicken. Because, you know what, if, if I leave now, I can beat the Baptist church. I already know the scripture. I'm familiar with I, You don't have to worry about me preaching. But let me tell you something. It's necessary. Are you hearing me preach this morning? It's necessary. And they are doing these things in small town America. Now, you don't believe me. They are doing this in Columbiana. There are movements even now to pollute Christianity in rural Alabama. There are movements to pollute good sound doctrine in churches in the Bible Belt. You don't believe this. One of the reasons I believe the country has finally imploded morally on itself is because the churches in small town America have finally, even the churches, begun to turn their backs on God. The Christians have begun to turn away to idols. Now the Bible gave us the Old Testament as a schoolmaster for the New Testament every time that the people of God were blessed. They would turn their backs on the Lord back to an idol. And judgment would come. But now we live in a modern world. We don't have big golden statues that we pray to. We don't have somebody offering their children to burnt gods. Burning them in the fire to maul it. We don't have that, do we? No, what we do have, though, in this country today is parents living damnable lifestyles in front of their children, teaching them the ways. We are offering our children to idols. We are offering them to the fire of idolatry without even knowing what we are doing. My mother has always said, what is accepted with one generation in reservation, the next generation will accept with an open arm. I have seen that to be true, even in the church. Churches have refused to preach the Word of God. But it's not just the preacher either. Saints of God, and I'm not coming down hard on you, I'm telling you this to build us up and awaken us. Awaken us. Every great awakening was started when the people woke up. When something got a hold of them in their spirit and challenged where they were standing. And they said, you know what? I'm not where I need to be. I want to get a little closer to my Jesus. Saints of God, it is a time that we get back to knowing what the Bible says for ourselves. It's important that the preacher preach with an anointing and he preach from the book. But it's important that the saints of God study to show themselves approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. As our communities, our schools, our businesses... And even our churches forsake the true worship of God. We increase in trouble. In the last days there shall be wars. Rumors of war. Earthquakes in diverse places. Floods and famines. Come on somebody. Have you listened to the news lately? The Bible says... If you don't cry out, the rocks will cry out in my place. The Bible says that the earth, it trembles. And the earth, it shakes to be restored to its creator. More depression and more immorality. More shootings in this place. Increased crime and increased violence. As rich as we are, we are poor. As rich as we are, we are in poverty. As rich as we are, we are blind and we are wanting. And the problem is spreading like a cancer. It's not some problem that can be solved by this political party or that political party. 
because in six years we've had two different parties running the show and they can't fix the world problems either one. But the Bible says, He said, I have set things in order. He has created things that were good. We cannot create anything from our own will that is good. But my Bible says that every good gift comes down from above, from the Father of light. But this is spreading across the country like cancer. It is spreading like a plague. I told you guys a few weeks ago about a dream that someone had in the church and it troubled them so bad they called me. Their dream had two parts. I shared the second part with the church, the part about how three storms would hit and affect the church. And the word that was given in the dream was basically retreat and stay inside the house of God. But the first part of that was a voice spoke in this person's dream and said, it's like a cancer. Like a cancer. Sin will spread like a cancer. What does this mean? How can we think we can forsake the worship of the true God and that God be okay with it? I grew up If you did not grow up in the church, there's some good things about that. You're first generation, you're you're fresh, that's great. There are good things, but there are downsides to that, obviously. And there's I grew up in the church. And so the the, one of the positive things that I really just I can tell you affected my life was I had people in my life, father, grandfather, mother, grandmother, that would quote word to me. Quote word to me. And I remember my grandfather would say, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. I've heard it quoted throughout my life a hundred thousand times at least. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you know, Jesus told the woman that day at the well, he said, the Father is seeking such to worship him. That's great. Man, we can get excited because we're people of spirit and truth. But listen to what Jesus told the Samaritan woman. She said, You know, our fathers worship God in these mountains. He said, woman, you know not what you worship. You have no idea what you've been worshiping. For example, the ecumenical councils of the world would have us all come together as religions and and just say, you know, we're all just... One people that we all really worship the same God, right? So no matter what you call yourself, you know, right? Right? Well, you see, for example, and I'm not, I'm not trying to tear anybody down, but we know that in Islam they pray to Allah, right? Which Allah is a pagan form of the moon god. That's a pagan name for the moon god. Well, if you're not careful and you know not what you worship, You'll mess around and you'll be involved in something that has a halt on you and you have no idea it's got you. But my Bible tells me don't worship the sun, the moon, or the stars. Be careful what you worship. You may think, well, this is off base in small town Alabama in a rural community church. I'm telling you, the country is in the shape it is right now, church, because the small town church turned its back on God. Because we stopped crying aloud and sparing not the people's sins. We've stopped preaching on it. Not talking about to the sinner. The sinner knew they were a sinner. That's why they came to God. But as a church, we quit living and standing on the word of God. We quit standing on the principles they brought us and kept us. 
with spirit. We are associated with God, His spirit, not another spirit. The Bible talked about the sons of Aaron that offered strange fire to the Lord. And God destroyed them by fire. We got to be careful when we come to God that we worship in spirit and in truth. And we're not guilty of offering strange fire to the Lord. We're not guilty of taking a fire off a censer of the world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go read Leviticus. But they take the fire from the sense, the altar of incense, put it in the censer of God, and they would go into the holy place and they would put that burning coal on the altar of burn incense of worship but here we are today we've taken a strange fire that did not come off an altar of repentance that did not come off an altar of sin and we brought a fire from the world and we've tried to bring it into a holy place the Bible says they must worship him in spirit and in truth We must walk in solid Bible teaching. We must not walk into the doctrines of the world. We cannot walk and build ourselves on creeds of men. We cannot build doctrine on an apostle's creed if an apostle's creed cannot be found in the Bible. Any doctrine that is not holy in the Word is not a doctrine of God. You cannot try to interpret Scripture from an external source. Scripture interprets Scripture because every word must be upon every word. Every line's got to be on the next line. You cannot contradict His Word and it still stand as His Word. Much of the sinfulness that takes place among Christians today is taking place, I will admit, not on purpose, but out of ignorance. They don't know. People don't realize. They don't know what they've gotten themselves into. They don't know what they've been messing with. They don't know what they've been dabbling with. No, Not knowing the spirit behind the behavior does not make the spirit legal. Like if you take something that's not yours and you don't know the owner just because you didn't know who was behind it and who owned it didn't make it any better. If you take the things of the world, if you don't realize the spirit that's behind it, you still took the spirit that's with it. The Bible says that, it says, can a man take fire into his bosom and not be burned? Not knowing the spirit behind the behavior. Or not knowing that that behavior is associated with worldliness. We unknowingly take into our life offerings and tokens of idols. Symbols of paganism. We have, they've become common throughout the lives, the homes of Christians. Amen? We think of ourselves now as we're modern. And we want to be fashionable. And we want to be in style. Instead, we foolishly take into our heart those things often to idols. In the New Testament, that was one of the things that the Jewish Christians said. You know what, Gentile Christians, don't eat meat sacrificed to idols. Because it becomes a stumbling block. What it says. it becomes. We know that an idol is a dumb thing. And Paul said, you know what? It's a dumb thing. It's not living. That meat that was sacrificed to idols, you know what? I mean, you could eat it and it not hurt you. But it becomes a stumbling block to others. That was just meat offered to idols. What if we started taking into our... And they didn't even go into practices and habits offered to idols. Because you know what? Really, that should be understood. We shouldn't have to tell Christians that behaviors associated with idol worship and idol living, idolatrous living, we shouldn't have to tell the Christian that. That should be understood because we know the Word. We've come out from among that kind of behavior. We're not going to do those things. We're not going to take on that. 
We're not going to take that into our lives. But we thought we were so wise in this modern day. We thought we were so educated and so fashionable and so modern that all this is just dumb stuff. There's no harm in it. The Bible says in Romans 1, 22 and 23, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. If you refuse to worship God in spirit and in truth, He will release you to worship what you desire. I Don't worry, I've got Bible for that. That doesn't mean that He'll ever approve of what you're doing. But He'll let you go do what you're going to do anyway. The Bible says in the next passage, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I'm going to stop here a moment. I spoke of it Wednesday night. There is a love that's a love of God, but there's a love that's a love of this world. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But you will see the slogan of the world right now is love is love. Anybody's seen it? Come on, go to Target. They got the t-shirts. Love is love. That's ungodly. Because love is not love. God is love. Help me, somebody. Help me, somebody. God is love. Love is not what the world says. The world says love is, I want to love what makes me feel good. I want to love what pleases the flesh. I want to love what uh, entices me. I want to love what my desire is. But God's love has nothing to do with desire. You see, you are a sinner. God don't desire sin, but He loves you because He didn't want to see any perish. So he gave his life as a ransom for your sin. The Bible says no greater love hath this than any man that a man would lay down his life for a friend. Love by definition is doing for somebody without penalty, without repayment, without thought of consequence. You see the Bible says husbands love your wives as, as Christ loved the church. It's not talking about go kiss her the way Jesus would kiss you. What it's saying is you die for her. You take care of her. You protect her. That has nothing to do with how it makes you feel in the flesh. That has nothing to do with carnality and sexual reproduction. It has everything to do with protecting what is sacred. Here we go. We're going to keep going. For this cause, God gave them up to a vile Affection. Hear what I'm saying. Brother Dennis, you called me a while back and you asked for some scriptures on something. And I said, I'll get with you this passage right here. Because they love the world and they love the pleasures of the world. God said, I tell you what, go do whatever you want to do. Vile affect affections is love, right? It's feelings, it's emotions. God said, go do your dirty thing. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. There is a doctrine in this world right now. That says, you know, the Bible says for a man not to lay down with another man, but it don't say nothing about women laying down with men. And you look at me cross like, well, that's crazy. How could? But that's how the world twists Scripture in the garden. The serpent went to Eve, and what did she say? Hath God said? Are you sure he said? Did he really say? Wait, come on, somebody. But, you know, the Bible, it don't say it like it said it for the men. You, and I know you think, my pastor's really meddling. I'm going to make sure we understand where we stand. 
God gave them over to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their own lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. What that says is God shall visit with a recompense. It said it in the Old Testament. If we do that, God will visit us with the recompense for our error. The punishment for our sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. I'm not telling anybody this. I'm not trying to beat a sinner in the head. I'm trying to tell the saints of God, you do not allow yourself to be put to sleep by the law of the drone of the world. Because if you're not in your Bible and you don't know what it says, the Pied Piper of this world will allow you to believe a lie. He'll allow you to begin to believe false doctrine. You won't know where the Word of God stands. You'll begin to stand on something that's not of God. You'll stand on a doctrine that's not sure and it's not certain. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Come on, somebody, if you're here this morning, I feel the Holy Ghost, and you said, I want to stand on good word, why don't you give God a little clap of hands right now? Give God a little shout of praise. Hallelujah. The Bible says it like this. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. The Bible says, my foot standeth in an even place. And in the congregation, I'll worship the Lord. You can't worship Him in His congregation if your, ha- your feet are not on the rock of God. If your foot's not on a sturdy foundation. But my foot, I thank God, is in an even place. I built my house on the rock. I've not built it on the sand, but I've built it on the rock of God. Come on church, build your life on Jesus. Build your life on the Word of God. We say, I love Jesus. Hold hold on, somebody. Hold on. I love Jesus, but I love Jesus, but you know what? The Bible's sort of outdated. And you know, there's a lot of them folks. They've smart theologians. They've even doubted the authenticity of some of those books. And you know what? There's so many contradictions in the Bible. Let me tell you, those people are about as dumb as a three pound pig. Because most people I have found, uh, you got them on TikTok and YouTube shorts, and they start, they got 30 seconds to teach you biblical theology. I can tell you about how much preparation they did for 30 seconds worth of footage. About 60 seconds. They don't know what it says cover to cover. They don't know what it says. Don't you be tricked by their garbage. Don't you be deceived by what they're saying. Because anybody can confuse you in 30 seconds. But I don't, I'm not going to allow myself to be tossed away by every wind of doctrine. Well, you know what? The Bible is sort of old-fashioned. You know, there's some stuff that is sort of offensive. But the Bible says he has exalted his word above his name. Be careful that you don't walk away from his word. I see the time music. Come help me. For this cause he gave them over. He gave the men over. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Be careful that you do not get lost into the deception of pleasing your flesh. Because God will allow you to be turned over to a mindset that allows you to think and believe that what you're doing is okay. That's what reprobate means. See, one of the biggest fallacies of a reprobate is this, is that they don't know what a reprobate is. They think every sinner is a reprobate but themselves. And and listen, there may be some people that think there's no help for the reprobate mind. I'm not of that. The Bible says there's only one sin that's unforgivable. That's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. A reprobate is just somebody that's believed a lie and God can't help them as long as they believe it. But if you will lean upon God... And not upon your understanding. If you'll cast away every imagination and every high-minded thought that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God. God can break the hold of a reprobate mind. Stand with me this morning. Help me. Jesus, help me this morning. I'm trying to wind it down. You know what? I have, and I know it, I have... I have been hitting on some things here lately that were maybe a little uncharacteristic of me. I've preached on some things in some sermons that almost seemed out of place. 
almost seemed out of place. Now I'm really going to show how oblivious to what's going on I, I am sometimes. But, you know, a few weeks ago, the Lord had been dealing with me. And, I, and, I, and again, if I'm off base on this, just forgive me. I'll preach something better next week. The Lord had been dealing with me about church, church folks got to be careful about yoga. And I thought, God, that's going to go over like a lead balloon. You know, it's, that's what's popular. And I told the church, hey, you guys want to stretch, you want to be healthy, that's fine. you got to be careful that you don't get involved in a religion unknowingly. Because yoga, what it really means is yoke, bondage. It's yoke. That's what it is. And I just, you know, and, and I, I left it at that. I just, it is what it is. And then I was preaching a few weeks ago, and just, you know, just the unction of the Holy Ghost hit me. And I just mentioned about Christians even believing in these healing rocks and things like that. And I thought, that's so off base. I mean, ain't nobody, nobody believes in healing rocks. Nobody believes in healing rocks. We don't have Christians. Not if you already got the healer. You ain't got no healing rock. Better than God, why would you go get a church rock? They don't do church rocks. They get all these mystical rocks. If you have to put mystical in the sentence with it, it's not of God. But, but, but you know, I'm crazy. And, you know, I, I stopped by, I stopped by, uh, how many of you, you people in Columbiana like those loaded teas and shakes they got on Main Street at that little store? Oh, man, yeah. College and I felt younger after I drank them and a little shot of caffeine. I go and they got all these cool colors and there's a Superman flag. Man, they're fun, right? Well, I'm in there talking to this lady and you know, I'm just carrying on with her. And I said, you know, what is the other stores back here? You know, in this area. She says, I don't know. There's different things. We got a new one the other day. I don't know. And she was making, I got Laura one. And, I, and Laura was at home. And I got me one because, you know, I need collagen, you know, to make me look young. And as I'm waiting them to make my drink, I'm just, you know, looking to see what kind of shops they got. Seen a boutique. We have learned in America, if you'll call, instead of calling it a store, call it a boutique, you can charge five extra dollars. And, I, you know, I went from the boutique, and I went to this other room, and I noticed, thank God they had the door closed. We'll get that on me. But, you know, they have, they had, they had mystical things I began to see there. They had witch's broom. They had crystal balls. You know, they had soaps and good soaps that had healing rocks in them. I had to actually do some research on them on Facebook. because Somebody said they had a Facebook page. I didn't want to talk ignorantly, but they, they do palm readings. Praise God. They had, you know, all kinds of wands for whatever. I don't know what we do with those of God, but they had all these things, and, and then I, I was, ooh, get away from all this foolishness. Devil get on you in this place. And I went to the next. Then they had a healing room. And I thought, man, surely they must be some charismatic minister in there with the oil about to lay hands. And it said, quiet. Session in progress. So they ain't praying loud, Jim. I got up out of there and went and got my milkshake. <laughs> I went and told Laura. She said, that's room 44. You don't know about that? I said, the what? She said, yeah, they had a booth set up on Main Street. I said, the devil they do. And, and then I just, it, it troubled me. I mean, it just bothered me. I, I, I just, something just kind of, you know, stuck. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't shake it. I had an itch that I just couldn't shake. And I began to wonder how many witches we got in Columbia. I mean, five at the most. That's if you include Shelby. We can't have a whole, I, listen, I'm just being honest, and I'm about, it's about to hit home, okay? I got to thinking, Brother, Brother Lee, we can't have too many witches in this town of 4,500 people. If they had many of them, they'd have them a church somewhere they'd be attending, and we'd pass it on Sunday. If we didn't stop that. We'd pass it. And then something dawned on me. I said to myself, I said, Self, who's keeping them in business? Hallelujah. 
I said, who's in there getting their chakra red? I had to read that on their website. I didn't know what that was. I said, who's in there getting the crystal ball? And the healing rocks and stuff. Who's buying all that incense? Who's buying that stuff? Because, you know, guess what they have every... Let me tell you what the devil's got every 30 days. Mortgage. He's got to pay the rent on his shop too. And it began to dawn on me that, that the Christians in rural Columbia, small town Alabama, we must be getting them red. We must be smart. Because I'm sure the town's only got four or five witches can't keep them in business every day of the week. I mean, right? Am I right? Couldn't have many. And I began to, I, then I got to thinking, you know what? I, I went to TJ Maxx. I believe it was. I, I'm not proud to say this, but I, I did go to TJ Maxx. And I was shopping my wife and son and sons, and they're doing their thing. And I wander. You know how you wander through the, floor, the store? When, when they have nothing that you want, you just wander. And I remember in the home decor section, they had these little, little Buddhas and these, these little, uh, what's, what's the Hindu goddess of death? What's her name? Vashti or whoever she is. They had little ones of her with all her flailing arms. It scares me. They had, and I thought, you know what? In rural Alabama, how many of those folks we got? I mean, some, maybe, but I bet we're not buying that store out. I bet Christian folks are decorating their homes with them. And then I began to think, well, Lord Jesus, I wonder how, I'm, I, you know, I wonder if that's, if that's reciprocate. I wonder how many Hindus and how many Buddhists and how many Muslims have crosses decorating their homes. How many do you think? How many do you think? None. But I mean, how many in Christians probably got a nice Buddha bookend on the shelf? Do you think, listen, it's harmless, it's a dumb idol. Paul said, oh, it's got uncomfortable because somebody done been in the shop. Somebody done been in there buying the devil. Somebody done got their chakra red. Eventually, if I say it enough, I'll use it in the right context, but I won't know it. What's happening is the enemy is desensitizing us. I was in the store the other day buying school supplies with my wife. And I seen a pencil bag. Pencil bag. Everybody's got to have a pencil bag. You got to keep your pencils. Or else the boys who don't have any pencils, they'll be stacking your pencils. You know the boys never have a pencil. I borrowed pencils all through school. I wrote with a piece of lead that broke off before. I didn't even have a pencil. But nobody even give you one. Heartless folks. He's done that. We, we've got all this going on. We've got all this stuff happening. And we're desensitizing. I, I was looking. And I seen pencil bag and it didn't have any words on it but it was just it was the rainbow and I thought you know what that's a harmless thing right God set a rainbow in the sky he did now however the rainbow that they promote is not the same rainbow it's not Roy G. Biv it's actually in a different it's out of order in creation there's your sign um, but we know that that's a symbol of a movement in the world. We, we know that. But if you're not careful, you'll allow yourself to become desensitized. And you'll begin to take things in your life, into your home, and your family, and you'll begin to lull asleep. And if we're not careful, it won't be just the witches having their palm red 
it will be brothers and sisters. I was telling Daryl about two months ago, I was at the gas station in Columbia at the Chevron and seeing this young man that I'd went to school with. He was bound to an uh, electric wheelchair. Uh, I think he had uh, maybe MS. And I had not seen him in years. And I, I said, uh, so-and-so, I won't call his name out. I said, hey, yeah, yeah. I said, man, you remember me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And I'm just carrying on with him, just talking. And there's this young lady with him, very nice, nice-looking young lady. She had her sunglasses on at like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, like aviators. That should have been my sign that she probably had horns under her head or something. But, you know, I just thought maybe she, she'd had her pupils dilated. And she, and she interrupted. She said, you went to school with him? I said, yes, ma'am, so-and-so. We went to school together. And she says, and now look at you. You're living that picket lifestyle, aren't you? That white picket, I'm sorry, that white picket fence lifestyle. I thought, that lady don't know me from anything. She don't know that I ain't broke as Job, Job's turkey. But I immediately felt the spirit in what she said. And just as she gazed at me, and I thought, there's just something not right about that. We cannot be lulled to sleep into believing that there is not a spiritual battle at work. Because immediately I began to look at her and I realized that she had a, a shirt on that had the symbols of Satanism. It actually had the devil on it um, with the symbols too. It was a whole, it was a whole ensemble. And I thought, this lady, she's, I'm not saying she's possessed, but the, the enemy is working in her life. She may have been possessed. But yet, here we are, as Christians, lulling ourselves to sleep, listening to the song of the world. I want to challenge the church today to make sure that you worship the true God. Don't turn to idols. Don't partake of the things that are offered to idols. Don't partake of the lifestyles associated with idols. Don't partake of the styles associated with idolatrous behavior. Don't associate with the mentality of idol worshipers. Do not associate with paganism, with paganistic, heathenistic, mysticism. Come out from among ye and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be ye not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. What fellowship has righteousness with the unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? What part with he that believes with an infidel, what agreement has the temple of God with an idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. You'll be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. Church, I want to open this altar this morning. I know I've kept you long. I apologize for that. But I had something on my heart. If there's anything in our lives we need to repent of, things that we've accidentally taken up, that we didn't even realize it was bad, things that now we know, things that now it's come to our understanding, let's get it right with God. If we've got lax on some things, let's get it right with God as she sings. Church, I want to open up these altars. I want to open up to the church this morning. As we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise. Here in this place. Oh, come on, somebody find an altar today. Would you find an altar? Hallelujah. Come on, brothers and sisters, altar workers. Pray and minister in the Holy Ghost to someone this morning. Show us your glory in wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your
What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Could we clap our hands to Jesus? Amen. I would like to say it is good to have our guests here with us today. Your guests, we're so glad to have you. We want to make sure we get your information. I know we already got some earlier, um, but also Ginger will try to get a guest bag, a welcome bag in your hand. Also, um, I would like to greet Sister Thomas, Minister Thomas. Um, many of you, if, if you didn't grow up in the old building next door, um, her father was pa a father, I keep saying father, father-in-law uh, was Bishop Thomas, P.J. Thomas. He's still living. He's about in his 80s now. I, as a young teenager, I remember him in the choir coming over, and he got up and, and, and preached and sang, and he just, he sang, 99 and a half won't do Got to have a hundred. Amen. You know, the Lord goes after that one lost sheep. Amen. But I would like her to stand and greet the church this morning if she would. Church family, we love each and every one of you. I, I know it looks like we have a full house this morning. I don't know how many is here this morning. It is good to have you, though. If there's somebody, she still can. If there's anybody out that you know of, let, oh, we got to do school supplies. Y'all sit down. 146, amen, that's tremendous. But you look around, Sister 
uh, Brewer is, is not well this morning. She called me this morning under the weather. Her granddaughter is sick as well. All right, I'm going to turn it over to my wife, and she is going to help. So I'll do it really fast. I know it's super late. Um, remember to pray to, for our kids as they start back school, whether it's public school, Christian school, homeschool, whatever. It's still school. They still have struggles they face. So remember them. Um, my high schoolers, who I got in high school. Come on. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the drill, so y'all come so the others know how to follow suit. All right. All right, my middle schoolers. My middle schoolers? Who I got in middle school? He's like, nope. <laughs> All right, my big middle schoolers. Y'all come grab, let's, let's get you a bag. All right, do I have any fifth graders? Fifth graders, raise your hand if I can see if you're fifth grade. Come on, Dawson. And Braden. All right, my fifth graders, they're over there. You see them? Third and fourth grade. If you're third and fourth, third or fourth grade, third or fourth grade, come on. Third and fourth grade. All right, my first and second graders, first and second graders. All right, my last group, my pre-K and kindergartners, preschool and kindergartners. All right. Okay. Preschool and kindergartners. All right, is that all of our kiddos? All right. My littles, can you come stand in front of my biggers over here? Come on, my littles. Boop, over here. Everybody look at Sister Gender right there and smile. All right, you guys are free to go.
That's like herding cats. Herding cats. All right, church, let's stand together as we're dismissed. All right, if I get your attention, let's all bow our heads together today. Lord, we love you, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. Every blessing that you have given us, we are so grateful for. God, we ask that you strengthen us by your word. God, help us to walk in your truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody say, Amen. Greet somebody before you leave today.